Hi everybody, welcome to my first video on beams. So the definition of a beam is this. Alright, a member that takes loads perpendicular to itself. Okay, so just quite simply it means this. You have a member, you have a load, and that load is applied perpendicular to the member. Okay, so that's uh, considerably different than the things we've been looking at so far. Bars, axial bars and torsional bars, where the torque or the load was applied along the axes of this thing, rather than perpendicular to that axis. Alright, so there's a whole different set of equations and principles we need to develop and use to describe the behavior of beams. So there's a few different types of beams. Alright, the first one is a simply supported beam. That beam is just like the, like the title says, simply supported. It has one support there. And one support there. All right, it's just supported on both ends by some sort of you know, support. All right, and then you have a cantilever beam. So that's when we fix one end, usually in a wall or maybe attached to another you know, axial bar that stood upright. And it just sticks out like that. And then, of course, you can have combinations of these two types. Alright, so basically this piece is cantilevered over, but this is still being supported here in a way that you can describe as simply supported if you just look at this piece. Alright, so we're going to look at all these types of beams in this you know, series of videos. If you take further courses into solid mechanics, you'll start looking at more complex beams, but that's a topic for another whole set of videos. So you might have noticed these supports I've been drawing in. So let's take a look at those supports and what they do and how they react differently. The first support I'm going to take a look at are like the roller supports. Alright, so these are both roller supports. Sometimes you see it as like a little like cart with wheels on the bottom, or you just see it as like somebody stuck like a log in there and this is like resting on top. And the key thing you need to know about this is that this support can only resist forces in the up and down directions. Alright. So you apply a load on it. The only way that this can resist is in the y direction, you could say because if you push a load in the x direction it will just roll so it can't resist anything if we apply a moment all right it's not going to do anything either because this beam is free to rotate like on top of that thing if i would take this end of the beam and yank it down like this that beam would just kind of like say here's my roller i yank down it would just kind of go like this it rolls over top it's not really like fixed all right so the next type is this here All right, this type of support. All right, and I'm not quite sure what to call it. It's not fixed. I'm going to reserve that for the next category. You know, but this one can resist forces in either direction. And you can see why. It's got the same properties as this. You push down, it's going to push back. And then when we push it this way, it's not free to roll over top. It's fixed here. Okay. I don't know what to call this. I'll call it a pin jointed. Because what essentially is, is there's like a pin through here. And that 
also prevents it from resisting a moment. Uh, you can pull down on this thing, but if it's pinned through, that pin will just allow it just to you know, move freely. All right, just like you know, an excavator, it has arms, that's a pin joint. It's allowed to move freely even though it resists forces. It can still twist. The final joint, as you might have guessed, is a fixed joint. And that's like we have what we have here with the cantilever beam. And this one resists forces. And it resists moments. Alright? Because you put a force, it's gonna push back that way. You put a force, you know, up and down like this, it's gonna resist. And if you twist it, it's gonna resist because it's like embedded in the wall. So these are the three types of supports. I've kind of listed them in increasing sort of order, if you will, of uh, resistive capabilities. And when you're analyzing a beam, as you go through this, you just gotta realize that these type of supports can provide these sorts of reactions. So when you have like a cantilever beam, you want to solve for like some unknowns here, you need to know that there's three types of things going on. All right, so let's just get some pictures, you know, some examples. And I got some here for you. First one I have here, this is this like, uh, looks like some structure, some roof structure, and it's just basically a big collection of eye beams. Alright, so all these beams later on, they're going to be supporting a floor or something like that. And that means they're taking their loads perpendicular to this axis here. So that's a beam. Another little bit of an example here. Some bridge beams, or you call them girders. And this is also, you know, it's concrete. Here we got steel. So we're going to look at the different, you know, properties of the materials and how that affects the, the beam. All right, and these are really the only examples I have because I mean beams are everywhere. They're in floor joists. All right, you can have wood beams. You can have beams in like your shelving. You can have beams, you know, in airplanes. You can have beams everywhere. Okay, and I'm sure you can think of, you know, at least a dozen other examples of where beams are very prevalent in everyday life. All right, so that brings me to the end of my first beam video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the rest of my videos on beams.